Hi guys! Before we start learning with this new topic, subscribe po muna kayo and don't forget to click that bell button para laging updated sa mga latest kaganapan dito sa ating channel. Comment na rin kayo if you have requests or questions. Happy learning! Hey, good day everyone! So today we are going to have a rationalization of the 50 item uh, post-test or review test or review exam for your image production and evaluation. So again, uh, before we continue, so baka pwede naman po kayong mag-subscribe and ilike nyo na I-like na rin po yung video ito and also uh, baka pwede na rin i-share and click that bell button para marami pong makapanood din ito at makatulong po tayo sa iba. Okay, so guess so let us start. So the first question is, to reduce focal spot blur, it is recommended to observe the following techniques. So first, I use a small focal spot. Yes, di ba? Mas maganda yung resolution ng, ng ating radiographic image kapag gumamit tayo ng maliit na focal spot. So, lahat ng may one, tama. So, this is eliminated. Okay? So, next, increase the SID. So, di ba? Sabi natin, we should maximize our SID or the distance from the tube to the image receptor. So, para maiwasan din yung magnification. Kasi pag masyadong malapit yung ating tube sa ating IR and also sa ating patient, so magkakaroon ng magnification which will also uh, result in uh, blurring of the image. So, correct ang increase SID. So, lahat ng may 2, tama. 1 and 2, tama. So, ito tama siya. So, ito wala na. So, ito na lang yung dalawa yung pupipilian natin. Uh, C and D. So, how about increase OID? So, ang ating sabi is dapat the patient or the object must be closer to the image receptor as much as possible. So, dapat mas malapit yung ating patient sa ating IR para maiwasan din ang ating magnification. So, uh, this is false. Dapat kasi decrease. So, ibig sabihin, yung correct answer is 1 and 2 only. Number 2, to reduce the prominence of anode heel effect, it is recommended to decrease field size. Yes, so, uh, in-encourage uh, in tayo or nire-recommend na dapat we should increase our collimation so that we can decrease our field size. So, lahat ng 1, tama. So, eliminate na ito. Next, increase SID. So, if we are going to increase our SID, so may iwasan ang anode heel effect. So, this is also correct. So, ibig sabihin, 1 and 2 are correct. So, eliminate na ito. So, yun ang titila na lang is C and D. So, number 3, increase the target angle. So, pag sinabi nating target angle, so, ibig sabihin, yung angulation ng ating X-ray anode or ang ating anode, angulation ng ating anode should be increased daw. So, uh, usually, the anode is angulated from 8 to 20 degrees. So, this is uh, stated in our line focus principle or we also call that the Gutsy principle. Okay, so according to Gutsy or line focus principle, so we should angulate the anode so that the actual focal spot is larger or bigger while the effective focal spot will remain small or dapat mas maliit yung effective focal spot natin. So, para ma-reduce ang patient dose. But the problem with the angulation of our anode is that it will result to the anode heel effect. So, para mas ma-minimize, hindi naman siya natin totally ma-avoid -ma because naka-angulate na yung anode natin nung binili natin yung ating X-ray tube. So, yung magagawa lang natin is to minimize para hindi siya masyadong halata. Pag sinabi kasing prominence, mahahalata siyang masyado. So, para hindi siya masyadong mahalata ang anode heel effect is we decrease the field size we collimate tighter, we increase the SID, so uh, we observe the SID na 72 inches kapag vertical radiography or chest radiography and about 40 inches pag tabletop. Increasing the target angle will just increase also the anode heel effect. So this is wrong. So ibig sabihin, yung tamang answer is 1 and 2 only. So by the way, the most common angulation of the anode that we are using in general or conventional radiography is about 12 degrees angulation. 12 degrees because it is enough na daw to cover the 14 by 17 field size which is common sa atin sa general radiography. Pero it can range from 8 to 20 degrees ang angulation. But if we are going to use it for our if we are going to use it for our uh, general radiography, so, most common angulation is 12 degrees anode angulation. 
So the angulation of the anode is fixed. Hindi siya adjustable. If you want another angulation of the anode, you need to buy a new one. Okay? So next, number three. To effectively decrease the differential absorption and provide a longer scale of contrast in diagnostic range, it is recommended to use blank. So uh, mga keywords nyo, longer scale, this is due to low contrast. So differential absorption is the absorption of the X-ray beam or the X-ray energy the patient. So this is, uh, this is controlled or affected by the energy of the X-ray beam. So the higher the energy, or let's start from higher KVP, means higher energy for the X-ray beam. And when the energy of the X-ray beam is higher, it has enough energy to penetrate the patient and to reach the IR. So therefore, when it passes through the patient, yung ating X-ray, so it will reduce patient dose. And for the low contrast, we all know that contrast is inversely proportional to our KBP. So low contrast means higher KBP. So meaning we have here high KBP. So lahat ng 1, tama. So again, eliminate ang 2. And then also, how about low MAS? Low MAS means low number of X-rays or low intensity or low exposure. Because the MAS controls the number of X-rays reaching the patient in the IR as well as the intensity and exposure. So when we use low MAS, so therefore, konti lang yung X-rays na produce, And therefore, konti, dan, konti lang din yung X-rays na maaabsorb ng patient. So decrease differential absorption. So this is also correct. So lahat ng 1 and 2, tama. So ito kulang. Mali. So yung natitira na lang is C and D. So compensating filters. So what is the purpose of compensating filters? So ang purpose ng compensating filter is to shield to shield the less dense areas or less dense anatomic areas to produce a more nearly uniform radiographic image. So from the word here, shield. So therefore, it will also decrease the absorption of the patient from unnecessary X-ray. So therefore, this is correct. So 1, 2, and 3 are correct. So next, a slope of the line drawn between the points on the characteristic curve that correspond to the optical density levels between 0.25 to 2 above the base plus fog densities. So this is the average gradient. Ito yung definition niya mismo from Busho. So average gradient is also the measure of radiographic contrast. It is the straight line in the characteristic curve. So other terms for characteristic curve is sen seto metric curve or the H and D curve. So there are two main portions of the H and D curve, characteristic or sensitometric curve. We have the toe and the shoulder. So syempre, shoulder yung nasa taas. Hindi ako marunong mag-drawing. So shoulder is nasa taas, then syempre yung toe nasa baba. The shoulder portion represents the overexposed areas of the radiographic film, while the toe represents the underexposed. So between the toe and the shoulder is your average gradient. So uh, in general, yung ating toe gradient is more important for general radiography according kay Bushong. Yung mid gradient and shoulder gradient, they are the same. So other term ng shoulder gradient is mid gradient and they are more important naman sa mammography. So next, it is the ability to image small objects that have high subject contrast. So pag sinabi nating high subject contrast, mas madali siyang ma-identify yung appearance ng isang object from the adjacent structure. Like for example, bones compared to soft tissue. So between the two, that these two have high subject contrast. So mas madali mo sila ma-identify. So the answer in number five is spatial or spatial resolution. Pareho lang sila ha? Either spatial resolution or spatial resolution. So high contrast. So yung contrast resolution naman, this is the ability to identify objects that have the same intensity or the same contrast. The same intensity or the same contrast. So this is contrast resolution. So with contrast resolution, kapag maganda, kapag high ang ating contrast resolution, it is easy to differentiate, to identify the same structure such as soft tissue versus soft tissue or bones versus another bony structure. So that is contrast resolution like liver to pancreas, 
also uh, stomach to spleen, stomach to pancreas, stomach to intestine. So, madali silang ma-identify if we have a good contrast resolution. Pag spatial or spatial resolution, for example, uh, ribs to diaphragm. So, mas madali silang ma- sorry, that is ribs to diaphragm is another example for contrast resolution. Pareho silang mga bony structures. Pag spatial or spatial resolution, for example, uh, ribs to lungs or diaphragm to stomach. So, magkaiba yung kanilang uh, structure, magkaiba yung kanilang intensity. So, they are, but if they can be identified easily, so we are referring to spatial or spatial resolution. So, when we say resolution, it is the ability to distinguish, distinguish, distinguish object detail, or it is the ability to differentiate between structures, images, or events and display. So, kapag sinabi natin, kapag sinabi natin resolution, it is the ability to differentiate objects, the ability to differentiate structures. So, there are uh, different types of resolution and most common na ginagamit natin is spatial and contrast resolution. So, uh, maraming klaseng resolution. Like sa ultrasound, we have the temporal and elevational resolution, lateral resolution, axial resolution, and so on. Pag sinabi naman natin detail, this refers to the sharpness. So, sharpness of the image. Therefore, sa number 6, detail ang answer. Next, number 7, the optical densities of unexposed film are attributable to which of the following? So, yung mga unexposed film natin, yung mga fresh from the box, kapag na-develop natin siya without exposing them to light or x-rays, so they still contain optical density. And we have what we call the base plus fog density. So, base density is correct. So, lahat ng 1. So, this is wrong na. Fog density, yun yung sabi ko may base plus fog density. So, number 2 is correct. So, wrong ito kasi 1 and 2 dapat. So, C and D na lang. Number 3, inherent. So, pag sinabi natin inherent, when the film is being manufactured, meron na siyang inherent na base density. So, yung density from kanyang base ng ating film. So, 1, 2, and 3 are correct. Next, a certain examination requires 100 kbp at 10 MES with a relative speed of the image receptor, which is 300. So, what radiographic technique should be used with a 100 speed image receptor? So, from 300 to 100 na lang. So, what will be our formula? So, the formula for this is that MAS1 over MAS2 is equal to relative speed 2 over relative speed 1. Or we can also write this as we are cross cross multiplying. So MAS1 times RS1 is equal to MAS2 times RS2. So we are looking for the MAS2 kasi ito na yung kanyang MAS1. So we are looking for MAS2. So MAS2 is equal to MAS1 times RS1 divided by RS2. So, we will substitute MAS1 is 100 kbp. I sorry, MAS, sorry, MAS1 is 10. So, let me erase that para here. So, 10 MAS and then we have the relative speed 1, 300 divided by relative speed 2 is 100. So, 10 times 300 divided by 100 is equal to, yes, that is equal to letter C, 30 MAS. So, this is the correct answer. Next, number 9. So, what is the estimated focal spot blur if the examination was taken at 72 inches SID, 65 inches SOD, and an estimated focal, effective focal spot of 0.3 millimeters? So, I will erase the writings para may space tayo for solving sa number 9. So, the formula for we are looking for focal spot blur. So, focal spot blur is equal to SOD over OID is equal to EFS or effective focal spot divided by the focal spot blur. So, based on this, the formula for focal, so pwede natin i-cross multiply ulit. So, pwede siyang SOD times focal spot blur is equal to OID times effective focal spot. 
So we are looking for the focal spot blur. So the formula for focal spot blur is OID times effective focal spot divided by divided by SOD. So titingnan natin if meron tayong OID. So walang OID dito, SID lang tsaka SOD. So for calculation of OID, it is equal to SID minus SOD. So to illustrate, so if we have here the tube, two patient, two IR or the image receptor. So the distance from the tube to image receptor is what we call the SID. The distance from the tube to the patient is what we call the SOD. While the patient to IR, we call that the OID. SOD is source to object distance, so the object is the patient. SID is the source of X-rays to the image receptor distance, so I, image receptor distance, or yung ating cassette with film. The OID is the object to the image receptor distance. So para makuha natin yung OID, subtract lang yung SID sa SOD. So in this case, ang SID natin is 72 inches minus 65 inches, that is 7 inches. So we can now substitute the formula here. So FSB is equal to yung OID natin is 7. And then we have the effective focal spot, which is 0.3 millimeters. So inches, 0.3 millimeters. And then yung ating SOD is 65 inches. Ito siya. So cancel na yung inches. Para millimeter na lang yung matitira. So, 7 times 0.3 divided by 65, that is 0 0.03 millimeters. So, this is the correct answer. So, that is for our effective focal spot na given and we are looking for the estimated focal spot blur. Number 10, this refers to the randomness with which a low number of X-ray photon interacting with the image, uh, intensifying screen. So, film graininess, this is the grainy characteristic of the film which is inherent. Structure model is inherent graininess ng IS. Ito, inherent graininess ng ating film. Structure model, the inherent graininess of our intensifying screen because uh, of the phosphor. Quantum model, sometimes this is also called the radiographic noise. And alam naman natin yung scatter radiation. These are radiation mostly coming from the patient in any direction. So, from the patient in any direction. So, ang quantum model, nag occur siya if we are, we are using low MAS. And with low MAS, just like what I have mentioned earlier, low MAS will also result to low number of X-rays reaching the IR or the IS. So, ito, low number of X-ray photon. So, this is quantum model. 11. Developer solution which functions as an anti-fog agent. So, anti-fog agent is our potassium bromide. Ammonium thiosulfate is the fixing agent. So, fixing agent siya. Yung chelates natin and yung ating boric acids, they are sequestering agents. So, yung chelates is sequestering agent ng developer. Boric acids is also the sequestering agent pero ng fixer naman. So, ang purpose ng boric acids and ng ating chelate is to stabilize to stabilize the developing or the fixing agents. So, next, removes undeveloped silver bromide from the emulsion. So, this the purpose of this is to remove the undeveloped silver bromide that is ammonium thiosulfate. So, ammonium thiosulfate is also the fixing agent, as I have mentioned, of the fixer. Potassium alum is the hardener, which is uh, to stiffen and shrink the emulsion uh, kapag nasa fixer na yung ating film or radiograph. So, na-discuss ko na naman yung chelates and your boric acids, which are both sequestering agents. Next, number 13, it indicates how much of an increase in patient dosage or patient dose accompanies the use of a particular grid. So, because of this, so we will be able to determine how much is the increase in the dose of the patient when we use a specific uh, grid ratio. So this is the grid factor, which also which is also known as the Bucky factor. Pareho lang sila. So with the increasing Bucky factor, so it will also increase the patient 
those because if we increase the grid factor or the bucky factor, we need to use high technique factors, which again will also result to high patient dose. So when we say grid frequency, this refers to the number of grid strips or number of grid lines per inch or per centimeters. So number of grid strips or grid lines per centimeter or per inch. So the higher the grid frequency, the higher the technique factor required, the higher the patient dose. As for the grid ratio, so the grid ratio is determined by the height of the lead strips divided by the distance between those lead, uh, lead strips or the distance which refers to the distance of the interspace materials or sometimes thickness of the interspace materials. So this is a grid ratio. And for selectivity, so selectivity is the ratio of ito siya, transmitted radiation to trans, transmitted primary to the transmitted scattered radiation. So this is selectivity. Okay, so with the use of grid, the higher the grid ratio, the higher the grid frequency, the higher the grid factor, the higher the technique factor should be used, the higher the patient dose. So selectivity simply means it is the ratio of the transmitted primary radiation to the transmitted scattered radiation. And in simple terms, when we say selectivity, so it is the decision, it is the discretion of the, of the lab tech kung anong grid ratio ang gagamitin appropriate for the examination. 15. So a radiograph was made using 60 kbp and 8 mas. If a second radiograph is required to slightly increase the density, what will be the new KVP if all other factors remain the same? So, ang keyword natin dito is slightly increase. So, therefore, we will use 5% KVP rule. Kapag naman visible ang term, visible change or great change, so we will use 15%. 15% KVP rule or 5% KVP rule kapag slightly ang term. So, ang sabi dito, what will be the new KVP? So, the original KVP is 60 KVP. So, slightly. So, we will get the 5% times 0.05%. So, that is 3. So, increase, therefore, add 60 plus 3. So, that will be the new KVP. So, 63 KVP. Pag sinabi naman natin visible increase or visible uh, change, so times 50 naman. Next, number 16. Ito, visible, pero decrease naman. In the optical density is required in a certain radiograph. If the original technique factors were 75 kbp, 200 ma, and 5 millisecond, what will be the new kbp for the second examination? So, ito ng keyword natin, visible. So, we will use 15% kbp rule. So, 75 times 0.15 is equal to 11.25. So, since decrease, so 75 minus 11.25. So, this is about 63.75. So, round off. Kasi wala naman tayong KVP na, na may point point. So, usually yung KVP natin is whole number. So, round off natin sa whole number. So, this is 64. Next, which of the following sets of exposure factors will produce the radiograph with the most magnification? So, as I mentioned earlier, magnification occurs if there is an increased OID. So, pareho lang naman yung OID nila. And also, magnification will occur if there is a decrease SID. So, di ba dapat maximize? Dapat increase ang ating SID to avoid or to minimize magnification. So, in this case, yung pinakamalapit na tube sa ating IR or sa patient will cause magnification. So, therefore, when we base it sa ating SID, this is the shortest SID. Therefore, it will result to increased magnification. So, letter C is the correct answer. 18. An exposure of 60 MAS produced an acceptable radiograph at a source to film distance or yung ating SID of 40 inches and an exposure was measured at 20 millirentgen. What will be the measured exposure if the SID will be decreased to 20 inches? So yung given natin dito is SID tsaka intensity. So we can use here the inverse square law. So inverse square law. So, sa inverse square law natin, so meron tayong shortcut. So, when the distance is doubled, so nag times 2 ang distance, the intensity will decrease by one-fourth. 
if the distance naman is halved, the intensity will increase by a factor of 4. So, ibig sabihin, but if you want to, to solve it using the long hand, so we have here the I1 D1 squared is equal to I2 D2 squared. Or we can write this as I1 over I2 is equal to D2 squared over D1 squared. So, pareho lang sila. The same lang. So, we can also use this if given na yung ating distance exactly nag-double or exactly nag-half. So, for example, we have here the distance is 40, tapos naging 20 na lang. So, exactly nag-half. So, the distance is half. Therefore, the intensity or the exposure will increase by a factor of 4. So, simply 20 times 4 is 80. But if, for example, yung 40 inches naging 27 inches, so hindi natin magagamit ang shortcut na ito. We need to solve using this process. Okay? Sige. So next, this chemical component neutralizes the developer and stop its action. So this is the activator which can be found sa fixer. So the purpose of the activator is to neutralize the developer and stop its action. Kasi tapos na si developer, need na siyang i-fix. Yung fixing agent natin is the ammonium thiosulfate which removes the undeveloped silver bromide. The preservative, pareho lang na sodium sulfite both sa developer and sa fixer. So yung purpose ng ating sodium sulfite as a preservative is to maintain the chemical balance and the restrainer which can only be found sa developer. So ito both, meron siya sa fixer at saka sa developer to maintain chemical balance. While well, strainer, makikita lang siya sa developer. Ang purpose ng strainer is to act as an anti-fog agent. So, yung ating anti-fog agent, yung ating strainer is the potassium bromide. So, next number 20. A grid problem caused by an improperly positioned grid at a specified SID. So, meron tayong uh, different kinds of grid and one of the grid that is commonly used is the focused Grid. So, this is the most commonly used grid. So, ang focus grid requires that the rad tech or kung sino man yung tech na mag-follow ng specified SID for that particular grid. So, yun yung pinaka-limitation ng ating focus grid is that we need to follow the specified SID. So, if the grid, the most commonly used grid is focus grid, so the most common problem is the of focus error. So this is caused by an improperly positioned grid at a specified SID. So of focus grid. Next, number 20. So a bladder stone was detected during KUB examination and measures 1.2 centimeters on the radiograph. So the SID is 100 centimeters and the SOD is estimated at 25 centimeters. So find the actual size of the stone. So for our formula, sa ating uh, actual size, so it is object size, object size ito yung ating actual size object size is equal to image size times SOD divided by SID so we will substitute so the image size that is 1.2 centimeters SOD natin is 85 uh, 85 centimeters divided by yung ating uh, SID which is 100 centimeters. So 1.2 times 85 divided by 100. So this is 1.2. So 85 divided by 100 is 0 0.85. 1.2 cm siya. So the correct answer is 1.02 centimeters. So tama ba? What is the magnification factor for an object that is located 4 inches from the film with a 40 inches FFD? So FFD is also our SID. So source to image receptor distance or the focal film to film distance. So focal film distance or actually, so ang tawag nila is focal dash film distance. Or actually this is focal spot to film distance. So we are looking for magnification factor. So, magnification factor, so dalawa yung kanyang posibleng uh, formula, depende kung ano yung given. So, meron siya, magnific so, magnification factor, dalawa yung kanyang pwedeng formula, IS 
over OS, so image size divided by object size, or pwede ding magnification factor is SID over SOD. So based sa ating given, wala tayong image size and object size dito. Instead, we have the OID, which is 4 inches. OID is the object to image the separate distance or object to film distance. Then we have the FFD, which is also the SID of 40 inches. So wala tayong SOD. So how can we solve for SOD? So SOD is equal to SID minus OID. So that is 40 minus 4 inches. That is 36 inches. Yung ating SOD. Now we can substitute SID of 40 inches divided by SOD na 36 inches. This is equal to 1.1. So 1.1. Actually, wala na siyang wala na siyang unit na inches. So mali yung binigay ko. So dapat wala ng unit. 1.1 na kasi na-cancel na dito. So 1.1. So therefore, ibig sabihin niyan na yung actual object is magnified 1.1 times dun sa ating film or sa radiograph. Next, a grid is fabricated of 50 micrometer lead grid strips sandwiched between interspace materials of 500 micrometer. The height of the grid is 2.4 millimeter. So, i-convert muna natin yung millimeter into micrometer. So, 2.4 millimeter is equivalent to 2,400 micrometer. So, the formula for our grid ratio is equal to height over distance. So, the height is ito, 2,400 micrometers divided by distance between the interspace materials that is 500 micrometer. So, cancel ang micrometer. So, this will be 4.8. So, ibig sabihin, yung grade ratio natin is 4.8 is to 1. So, walang 4.8 dyan. So, yung pinakamalapit kapag round off natin, that is 5 is to 1. 23, so meron na tayong answer dito. So, 12 MAS used for an 8 is to 1 grade ratio for a particular exposure. It is desired to repeat the examination using 16 is to 1 grade ratio. So, what will be the new MAS to maintain the original radiographic density. So, for the MAS, kapag 8 is to 1, so let me erase. Kapag 8 is to 1, so from non-grid, kapag gumamit tayo ng 8 is to 1, the MAS is tripled, so times 3. Kapag naman ang gagamitin natin ay 16 is to 1, the MAS is times 4. So, ibig sabihin, so, yung original niya, kasi gumamit tayo ng 8 is to 1, so yung, yung kanyang MAS sa 8, sa 8 is to 1, grid ratio is 12. Therefore, nung wala pa siyang grid, ang original na MAS is, so 12 divided by 3, that is 4. 4 MAS nung wala pa siyang grid. Kasi sabi natin, kapag 8 is to 1, so times 3 siya, kaya naging 12. Kapag 16 is to 1, so from no grid, so 16 is to 1, sabi ko is times 4, so therefore, 4 times 4, that is 16 MAS. So, ang nagkamali na ako ng type dito, actually, this is 16 MAS. Pero halimbawa, ako sa board exam, ganito yung lumabas, so yung pinakamalapit, kapag nag-round off tayo. Okay, so that is letter A. So, next, exposure factors of 60 kbp and 15 MAS are used for a particular non-grid. So, kapag gumamit tayo ng 8 is to 1, what will be the new kbp? So, kanina, MAS yung uh, nag-change natin. So, what is the new MAS? Ito naman is grid. Kapag 8 is to 1, so we simply add from non-grid na KBP, so we will add 20. So, that is 80 KBP. So, yung mga conversion factors na sa uh, MAS, so makikita yan sa busyong or meron din sa uh, Cowan's Formulating Techniques. Yung kay, hindi ko maalala yung pangalan niya, basta yung name ng book is Cowan's Formulating Techniques something. Okay, so next, 25. A particular radiograph was produced using 24 MAS and 80 kbp with an 8 is to 1 grid ratio. The radiograph is to be repeated using 12 is to 1 grid ratio. So, what is the new MAS? So, sabi natin kanina, from no grid, no grid to 8 is to 1, MAS is times 3. From no grid to 12 is to 1, the MAS is times 3.5 or 3.5. Yung nabanggit ko rin kanina, no grid to 16 is to 1, MAS is times 4. 
So, ang sabi dito, so 8 is to 1 daw, gumamit ng 24 MAS. So, ibig sabihin, hahanapin muna natin yung original na MAS nung wala pang grid. So, 24 siya, nung ginamitan ng 8 is to 1, therefore, nag times 3. So, ibabalik natin sa walang grid, 24 divided by 3, that is 8 MAS, sa no grid. So, maghahanap uh, tayo kung ano yung bagong MAS kapag gagamit tayo ng 12 is to 1. So, ito, simple lang. So, 8 times 3.5. This is 28 MAS. So, walang 28 dito. Nagkamali na ako ng lagay ng choices. Walang 28. So, yung pinakamalapit is 31. Hindi kasi pwedeng 24. Kasi sa 24, ginamit na siya sa 8 is to 1. So, since gumamit tayo ng mas mataas na grid ratio, so dapat yung mas mataas din sa 24. So, 31 yung pinakamalapit. Pero again, actually, that is 28 MAS. So, we have 8 from no grid multiplied by 3.5 which is a constant value, so 28. Next, an accessory device used to confine. So, confine, ibig sabihin, limit or restrict. So, therefore, this is beam restrictor. Katulad ng mga collimator, cones, cylinders. So, intensifier or the intensifying screen, so to multiply, to intensify, so hindi siya to limit. Filter, so ang filter is used to absorb soft x-rays or low energy x-rays. 27. Which of the following devices will reduce radiographic contrast? So, reduce radiographic contrast. Grids? So, no. Kasi yung grid natin improves or increases contrast. So, this is the correct answer. So, ang purpose ng grid, diba? To improve contrast, to increase contrast. So, dito ang tinatanong reduce. Next, 28. As screen speed increases, radiation dose to patient decreases. Kasi kapag mabilis yung screen speed natin, so yung exposure time natin is magiging shorter na lang. So therefore, shorter ang time na ma-expose ang patient and also we can use uh, lower technique factors. So therefore, it will reduce patient dose. 29, as screen exposure increases, so kapag uh, matagal daw na-expose yung screen natin, meaning longer time, so therefore, it will also increase the density. Kasi matagal mo siyang in-expose, so magiging increase na din yung kanyang blackness. Next, 30. So, geometric and sharpness is controlled primarily by decreasing the OID. Dapat, para maiwasan natin yung geometric and sharpness, katulad ng magnification, so dapat yung ating object, yung patient natin, is as close to the IR as possible or i-decrease natin yung OID. Kapag increase ang OID, malayo yung patient sa ating IR, hindi siya dikit, so it will, it will increase magnification, which is a form of geometric and sharpness. Increased SID, yes, pwede. Decreased SID, so hindi, kasi magkakaroon ng magnification dito. So tama ang C at ang B, pero yung keyword dito is primarily. So this is the correct answer. 35, so kinulang. Factors used for post-mortem radiography, that is letter, yes, B. So yung mga patay na ina xray natin, so usually ang recommended na MAS is 32 50%. Actually, it's 35 to 50%. So, 35% is required for post-mortem radiography because of the pooling of blood sa head, sa thorax, and sa abdomen. So, we, we need to increase the MAS by at least 30 to 35% for expiration chest. Kasi hindi na makapag-inhale yung patient. So, expiration technique na siya. And kapag medyo, so ang 30 or 35% na increase sa normal natin na MAS is ginagawa siya or ina-apply siya kapag kamamatay lang ng patient or medyo mainit-init pa. Pero kapag medyo matagal na, so the patient is dead for uh, more than 30 minutes, so kailangan natin mag-increase ng KVP by as much as 50%. So ito kapag kamamatay lang and kapag uh, more than 30 minutes na siyang patay, so 50% na ang increase. Because sa chest, doon napupunta yung kanyang mga blood kapag namatay na yung isang tao. So, tapos wala pang air doon kasi hindi na nga makapag-inhale yung patient. So, sa post-mortem, 30 or 35 to 50% increase in MAS is recommended. Next, 32. AP abdomen was done using 85 kbp and 20 MES with a 14 by 17 size of film. So, if the size of film will be changed to 10 by 12, what will be the new MAS? So, for our conversion factor, so from 14 by 17 field size, and then we will change it sa 10 by 12. So, ang conversion factor increased MAS by 40%. And from 14 by 17, tapos uh, 
ni-repeat natin yung exposure using a smaller field size na 8 by 10. So, the MAS will be increased by 60%. So, dito, from 14 by 17, nag-10 by 12. So, increase natin ang MAS by 40%. Ang MAS niya is 20. So, 20 times 0.4. That is, yes, 20, that is 8. So, increase. Ang sabi dito, increase. So, 20 plus 8, that is 28. Next, abdomen AP was done using 14 by 17. Tapos, ito kanina, 10 by 12. Dito naman is 8 by 10. So, sa 8 by 10, 60%. So, 20 times 0. 0.6. So, that is 12. So, we have 20 plus 12. We have here 32 MAS. Next, 34. An orthopedic patient underwent shoulder AP using 65, 60 kbp and 5 MAS. And after a close reduction, another radiograph was taken while the patient had a wet cast. So, from 5 MAS, what will be the new MAS if the patient has a wet cast. So, sa atin namang conversion factor, so wet cast, usually MAS is times 3. So, 5 times 3, that is 15. So, sa wet, ito, sa dry cast naman, MAS is times 2. For plaster, plaster cast, so times 2 rin sa MAS. So, double the MAS or you can add KVP by 15%. If the cast naman is fiberglass, medyo mayaman yung patient natin, naka-fiberglass ang cast, so no change in MAS. So 35, red filter transmits light above, about, that is, so pag uh, red filter, so it uh, transmits about 600 nanometer. Safe, kapag 550 naman, this is for amber, amber filter. Safe light must not fog a pre-exposed film within 45 seconds. That is based sa ating QAQC. So, kapag uh, exposed na yung film, so as soon as possible, dapat ma-lagay uh, na siya sa developer or sa automatic processor. So, pag pre-exposed, dapat ang safe handling time within 45 seconds, dapat hindi siya magkaroon ng fog. Common safe light filter brand used for rare earth screens is GBX. So, rare earth screens usually emits uh, light na green and blue. So actually, uh, marami siyang uh, marami siyang klase ng color ng light na iniimit pero mas prominent ang green and blue. Pero between green and blue, actually, mas prominent ang green light emitted by the rare earth screens. So GBX, ang sabi daw is green, blue, x-rays. Yung rotten GB, yung rotten GB naman, is for blue sensitive film. So yung uh, two types of safe light filter, we have the amber and red filter. So yung amber for blue sensitive film, yung red filter is for green and blue sensitive film. Pero yung question dito is brand. So yung brand is GBX. Next, what screen material matches the amber filter? So yung ating amber filter, sabi ko, is for blue sensitive film. So the blue sensitive uh, film, so ang paris niya is amber filter, which is uh, kaparis din ng ating calcium tungstate screen. Pag green and blue, rare earth. Pag blue, so calcium tungstate screen. Next, rare earth screens emit what color of light? Sabi ko, almost lahat naman iniimit niya, pero mas prominent siya sa green. Distance of white light switch from the floor is how many meters? So pag white light switch, 1.6. Pag safe light switch, 1.4. Okay, so for example, ito yung wall natin. Ito yung dalawang switches ng ating safe light and white light. So, ang safe light, so dapat from the floor is 1.6 meters. So, safe, uh, this is white light. Ang safe light is 1.4 meters. Ang height ng switch, ha? Next, 41, what is the recommended minimum flow rate for wash tank and automatic processor that is 12 liters per minute? Or this is about 3 gallons per minute. 42, it is known as the most commonly used preservative in the processing chemical. So, na-mention ko na kanina, preservative, sodium, sulfide. Next, 43. This is referred to as the strongest alkali. It is very corrosive. Strongest alkali is sodium hydroxide. Next, during the developing process, redox occurs simultaneously. Redox meaning reduction and oxidation. So, they happen at the same time. So, uh, actually, we have the acronym Europe. If you can remember in your discussion sa image production and evaluation. So, Europe stands for electrons are 
used, electrons used in reduction. So, E, U, R, then oxidation so, produces electrons. So, during processing, kapag nag-process tayo, so, nangyayari ang redox or ang reduction oxidation. So, during reduction, gumagamit siya ng electrons. And during oxidation, nagpo-produce siya ng electrons. So, they happen at the same time, ha, ang redox. Next, a safety-based material. Keyword nyo is safety-based, that is cellulose triacetate. So, it was replaced by the most commonly used base material today. So, most commonly used is polyester. Pero ang question, what is the safety-based material which is replaced by polyester? So, parang pinaconfuse na kayo. So, that is cellulose triacetate. So, ganun din sa board exam, you need to to understand muna yung question. Kasi baka yung nakita nyo is yung keyword lang. Ito yung nakita nyo most common. So, polyester. Pero ito pala yung isang keyword niya, safety-based. So, that is cellulose triacetate. Next, base is a part of the radiographic film that serves as support structure for the emulsion. So, what is the atomic number of base? It is 7. So, the atomic number of base and gelatin, pareho silang 7. Yung ating namang bromine is 35. So, this is bromine. Yung ating iodine is 53. 47 is silver. So, this is base and gelatin. Gelatin. Next, 48, a radiographic film is one of the most important tools used in radiology that mainly converts latent into manifest image. It has several components that have their own specific functions. In what component of the film where X-rays and light photons interact and transfer information? So, transfer information, nag-interact sa emulsion. Gelatin, yung keyword nyo dito is vehicle, serve as the transport or vehicle for the silver halide crystals. Adhesive layer, so syempre para mag-insure na naka-attach firmly yung ating emulsion sa base. Yung base natin is the support structure. Next, the only theory, theory, that is gurney mott theory, that describes how image is formed in the radiograph. Frenkel defect refers to the contaminant or the imperfection in the arrangement of the silver halide crystals. So yung ating silver halide crystals, hindi siya naka-arrange sa ating emulsion. Hindi siya parang naka-align na ganito. Instead, the silver halide crystals are randomly arranged. Parang they are scattered lang everywhere. So that is what we call the Frenkel defect, the imperfection or the contaminant in the radiographic film. And because of this defect, imperfection or contaminant, so it was possible, it is possible to form a latent image in the radiograph which can be converted into manifest image later during processing. So this is the correct answer. Last, number 50, the area in the radiographic film emulsion where the exposed silver halide crystals migrate are or is termed as the blank except. So sensitivity center, sensitivity spec, and latent image center are one and the same. So this means that all are correct, walang except. So lahat tama, sensitivity center, sensitivity spec, and latent image center are both, are all, hindi pala both, are all the correct answer. Okay, so that's it for our uh, numbers 1 to 50 na rationalization sa ating image production and evaluation. So, sa next na-upload natin, yung continuation naman from 51 to 100. Pero I think uh, magbibigay muna ako ng, ng post-test for you to answer para sa next natin na, na discussion. So, bali, practice test muna kayo from 51 to 100. And then after na practice test, so I will post again yung ratio from 51 to 100. Okay, so again, Pag hindi pa subscribe, pakisubscribe na lang po and click that bell button para lagi kayong updated sa mga latest na kaganapan, latest na upload dito sa ating channel. So, thank you everyone. God bless and happy learning.